Welcome back. In the second video, we're going to discuss microanatomy, or the histology of bone. So here, we'll focus on the components of the bone tissue, and in a future video, we'll focus on the organization of these components. Following this video, I'd like you to be able to describe the basic development and functions of the cells in bone tissue, describe the contents of the extracellular matrix of bone tissue, and explain the tensile strength of bone in relation to the extracellular matrix. So bone is the most dense of the connective tissues, and it's important to remember that it is dynamic, meaning it's not this stagnant framework structure that doesn't change with time, it's constantly changing. And we'll focus more about its growth and remodeling in future videos. But from this image, we see cross sections of what are called osteons. So these are those that look kind of like this tree ring structure. So you can see circles leading toward the inner most part that contains the neurovasculature, like what you see here. We also see these little darker structures here are the cells embedded in the tissue, and those are suspended in extracellular matrix. So we'll start by focusing on the components of bone matrix by looking at this quick science experiment I did for you after this year's Thanksgiving. So we'll watch now as I try to bend these bones that each were prepared a little differently. So in the first, you see this is a pretty small diameter bone, but I'm definitely struggling to break it. However, you do see, especially toward the end, that it is bending a little bit. And it breaks eventually. Next, we see this larger diameter bone. This one shatters right when I put pressure on it. The final is another large diameter bone, and this one, completely flexible, bends fully in half. So my hope is to demonstrate the qualities and the parts of the extracellular matrix. So we're gonna talk about these parts and then go back to what we saw in that video. So we can see in these two images, I've isolated an osteon. On the left side, we can see the cells are embedded in these tree rings, like we saw in that last image. And this image here on the left is representative of the bone minerals that make up 55% of bone weight. So the bone minerals are stored as a mixture of calcium salts that combine to form this mega crystal structure called hydroxyapatite. And that gives bone its characteristic hardness. Now you don't need to draw out the synthesis of this, but knowing that calcium and phosphate are big players here is important. In the image on the right, the minerals have been removed, and this leaves the other part of the extracellular matrix, which is the organic matrix. This is the unmineralized part. So this is mostly made up of collagen and gives bone its flexibility. So 30% of bone is this organic matrix. We have approximately 15% water as well. And that in full will give you the entirety of the bone extracellular matrix, or also known as the bone matrix. So the demonstration from earlier was to show the importance of both the mineral and organic con components of the bone matrix. So when the organic matrix, matrix is removed from bone, it becomes hard and fragile, like we saw with that one that just shattered. Whereas if bone is demineralized, it is completely flexible and doesn't hold its structure. 
So the ratios in our bones represent sort of this Goldilocks zone of just right with a mix of both allowing for the bone to bend a little under forces, but also remain strong. And this is something we call tensile strength. Now, four types of cells inhabit bone tissue. One lineage is seen here, and then the other cell, the fourth cell, is in a lineage of its own on the next slide. In bone, the stem cells are called osteoprogenitor cells or also called osteogenic cells. These are capable of division and differentiate into osteoblasts. Now osteoblasts build up bone. So you can remember that osteoblasts build bone. Cool. Now osteoblasts have a role in secreting that flexible organic bone matrix and also beginning the process of calcification where those mineral, uh, minerals crystallize to form the hard structure of hydroxyapatite. So once building is complete, these osteoblasts get trapped in the extracellular matrix that's mineralized and transition to become osteocytes. And these maintain bone. So these are those mature cells that sit and maintain bone and are able to detect forces on that bone. So the other cell of bone is formed by the fusion of monocytes. And these are large phagocytic blood cells that are derived from the red bone marrow. And a bunch of these cells fuse together to create this osteoclast. And we'll see these here are representing the nuclei. So osteoclasts are actually multinucleated from the fusion of those cells. And the scale is relatively accurate with this in the last slide. These cells are quite big. So this ruffled border here at the base of the osteoclast will come in contact with the bone and secrete lysozymal enzymes and acid to break the bone down. So you can remember that osteoclasts consume bone. Now, fun bonus question, what did I do at home to make those turkey bones so flexible? If you guessed I soaked it in acid, you're correct. And I actually did soak it in hydrochloric acid because I have that at home, but not white vinegar. My partner is a chemist, that's how it goes. So for the brittle bone, I didn't have any collagenase lying around. So instead I baked them to remove some of the water from that organic matrix. That did make them more fragile, but it's definitely not perfect, hopefully demonstrative. Now we've reached our question. So which component of bone is responsible for its hardness? Is it the inorganic bone matrix made up of hydroxyapatite, the organic matrix made mostly of collagen, osteoclasts, or osteocytes? So take a pause to answer. So the correct answer here is A, the inorganic bone matrix made up of that hydroxyapatite. That's the mineralized, portion of bone, and that gives it its hardness. Now what gives it the flexibility? That's going to be from that organic bone matrix up a lot of collagen. So which cells begin the hardening or the calcification process of bone? Those are going to be osteo blasts. So those are important for the hardness of bone as well, but the absolute best answer here is hydroxyapatite. 
What do those osteoclasts do? Those consume or break down bone. And what about the osteocytes? Those maintain bone. Excellent. So lastly here, I just have a summary slide with all of uh, basically a visual representation of this portion. So thank you for your attention in this one, and I'll see you in the next one where we organize these components.